Hello guys, welcome back to the second episode of the Mid to Diamond series and for this episode we are going with the Kale. The first game is going to be 80 Kale uh, because we have a lot of AP and 80 Kale also has insane DPS. And we are starting off with a terrible matchup, one of the worst ones. I think Aurelia is a bit worse but Yasuo is definitely very tough to deal with. And also Jax. Two of these are known to be pretty heavy counters to kill, but I picked it anyways. Because I feel like it can be a pretty good addition to our comp and also to protect the Jinx when uh, Evelyn is trying to flank and such. And it also helps having a strong split push up. But when you play a kill, you are playing for that scaling. And Yasuo being very strong early on, you are not trying to fight. You're just trying to go for these last hits and allowing yourself to scale up and getting that, you know, level 11 and level 16 spike. Also the runes, this was from the last game so I forgot to switch this up but I like to use Sorcery second. You know, you can get Mana Flow Band, you can get Gathering Storm. Transcendence is what I prefer to use actually but... Fine. The potions are pretty strong, I found out. What, he started E? I'm gonna trade it with him then. Look at how much HP he's losing. All fine. Just last it with the E. And against Yasuo, of course, you want to keep his shield down. Before you go for any sort of trade. This guy is just pushing the waves, that's fine for me, because we just want to be on the tower. And you know, if you can get to stack the passive up on kill, you can actually win a lot of fights. Level 1. Um, I do, especially do this if I play her top, you know. Playing against another champ that's not too strong early on, you can win a lot of fights level 1. If you get to stack up the lethal tempo and your passive as well. Keep in mind your Q, your E, as well as your ranged auto attacks can get body blocked by this win wall. That's not very ideal. Well, this Yasuo kind of sucks. That's a good thing, he wasted his win roll. He doesn't really know how to use it, probably. But normally, you know, early on... What you do... You can go for these fights. But early on on Yasuo what you do with the win wall is that you wait when a cannon minion is getting low HP then then you win wall it. So for example Kale would not be able to last it without walking up. Good luck with that one. So this guy is um not playing very smart. That's alright, but you see what I meant with um, forcing fights early on with kill. If you can get to stack up the lethal tempo as well as your passive. Now the wave sucks obviously and our jungle also griefed so this is pretty bad. But I had to TP regardless. If he walks up to trade right here, we're just gonna auto attack trade with him. You have to start maxing the Q, I believe that is what you do first on kill. But see, the mistake I see a lot of people make into a Yasuo is that when they when he gets the trade off they just run away instead of also trading back because if you don't trade back against the Yasuo kinda you know 
He's just gonna run you down at some point. Yeah. Oh, he did not flash early on. Whoops. Then I should not have pinged it. Does he need help? I had the ultimate just in case, but it was a way where I had to beg off, but I could not. Just leave it, bro. Just leave it. Yeah, I might have to stay. This one is actually, I'm starting to like this uh, rune a lot because you're getting these potions and you also get that free level uh, into one of your abilities. There's a what here. Disaster, disaster of a top laner. But yeah, this game is going to be very rough, that's for sure, because we're playing against two heavy split pushers. If it was one, it would be okay. To a certain extent, but two of these went to be ridiculously hard. Need to make sure I have enough mana for an ult. That's why you know you run out of mana pretty fast if you don't have mana flow band. And back with auto attacks, and he does not have ignite. So his all in potential would not be as good compared to if he did have it. The past is the the future is for the it's my bad, I should not eat that one. That was a misclick. We can sustain our back a bit, a bit, but I'm gonna stay far back because Evelyn is probably level 6. If I get ganged right now, it would be pretty bad. I trolled. What am I doing? Okay, let's back off here. It's pretty risky to stay. Evelyn could be here as well. If she comes, I'm dead. That's a big mistake. Personally, a big mistake. Alright, we're gonna go for the Kragans there. That is the go-to on this build. Oh, I think he could uh, help mid. Hey, why is he going for... Wait, what? Gonna skip the rip off? Not sure what that was about. But it's a lane you're going to lose, you know, for the majority of the game. Like this matchup itself. So if you're able to get a lead early on, it's certainly going to help you out a lot when it comes to being able to scale up. They're probably doing the Drake. Maybe a gang bot afterwards. Who knows? I actually like getting a couple points into the E on kill against the Yasuo because it's a sort of guaranteed hit. Your Q is a lot harder to hit with. That's all that wave, what? He ults it. Okay, nice shot down. That's good. That's pretty good. We don't know where Evelyn's at, so I'm not, I cannot walk up. That'll be troll. And she can probably dive me as well at this point, especially if she has her ult. I'm gonna stay back a bit here and heal up when it's possible. Oh, he's pushing, that's good. I have to take out his wind wall. Okay, nice. See her now, so that's good. If I hit him with this Q, I could run him down, but also I had to keep an eye on the Evelyn, which could still be here. I think I'll place a control ward on this side, just so I can, after she killed the Echo, to know if she's coming. That's a good Q. 
Oh, Echo survived. Okay, that's good. Hey, what? He had all up again? I'm mistiming his cooldowns, but we're fine. That's looking good. Beautiful, they got this one. I trust them. Nice, guys. Beautiful. Right, gonna play us a ward here, and then we'll back off. We can CP back, and we can get another big component. This is a heavy DPS build on Kale. And the good thing about Kale is that you can be very versatile with your items. So if you're having a lot of AP on your team, you can go AD. And if you have a lot of AD, you can also go AP. So you have some good options when it comes to the builds. So uh, we're playing against Evelyn, remember what I said when it comes to warding against the Evelyn. Yes, was coming right. Go for it, let's go. Oh, she ran away. He's getting that password pretty fast. Okay, we kept the ultimate for her ult, otherwise I would have died. That's working out fine. They're not getting any kills. Evelyn needs to snowball early on, and Yasuo is also not getting anything done. A lot to push this out, but I think we just let Yasuo push it. Very risky move to take the drake right now. This is super risky. But maybe it's fine because this guy decided to stay when he's slow. They got the wind wall and then just peg off. And now we can just penetrate into him. It's all about that wind wall against the Yasuo. You have to be able to bait it out. That's all that matters. Got the drake. I hope they can just peg off now. No mind, they won't. No way they're going to beg off. You're gonna last hit this one. Giving that E for the last hit. Last hit's a kill after all. Alright, let's go. Now we got the wave clear and we're gonna get the Kranks there. If Yasu decided to chase all the way, I would have pushed. Looks like he's coming back to the lane. Kranks there online, gonna buy another control ward, this for the Evelyn, and also gonna get this one, the Lens. Also for the Evelyn, but also to clear out the vision, and because normal wards do not work against the Evelyn anyway, so no point really. He could actually jump over. W the Yasuo. Well, that's a good one. Oh man, he even ults it. Man, that's cringe, bro. You even had to ult. Good defend, please. I didn't even have my ults. Please make the jump. Oh my god, bro. Bro, you just have to jump the site. It's like typing three sentences, explaining how that failed. Hotline is winning at least, so it's okay. Even though Rakan made the move and gave him a shutdown. We need Ginsu's and we need a lot of good AD items, like the um, Terminus is also a good one. Handsome Dancer. This guy? 
Maybe it's Sergot, who knows? Problem is that I think they're gonna die mid. But I usually don't trust my bot lanes to uh, swap. They just tend to overextend and then they get caught by the enemy jungle or something and they die. Just like what happened here. We are level 11, so of course we need that 5 level as well. Is he coming here? An ult over? I'm not gonna chase that one, I think they got this. I, am the light and the glory. I have to go top, seems like. Got this on a massive inting spree, but we're also getting some farm top side, so let's go. Gex is like one of these champs that Kayla just can't do anything about because his Q cooldown is so low. So, even if you dodge the first one, you know, by slowing him down and such, it's gonna be back up pretty fast. And then the E also makes it really hard because you can't auto attack. get back, pick up another wave because this guy should not be here, I'm not gonna follow him, just let them die if they do this so. Alright, let's get the components, X is level 12, we are as well, but he's sitting on 7 kills and he has this big spike right here, this is the point where you don't mess with that guy. Ginsu's and then probably Phantom Dancer and Terminus can be really good here. Especially for the Jax because of his ultimate and he also gets pretty tanky. He's stealing, he's trolling. Why is this guy trolling? I don't think he's trolling, I think he's just bad. Maybe he is trolling, who knows? Because he failed that one jump. Lift me from mortal temptation. Right. Okay, they got a tower. I have to stay top, seems like, otherwise he's gonna drop the herald. I see the jacks down here, so it'll be a mistake to walk this side. Gonna ping that he's over here. That's a nice flank. But also... Pretty blind players on my side. We'll four of them. But I think they are mainly struggling because the Echo is uh, pulling. That's what he's doing. Right, we need, we still need a bit more gold until we can get Insos, but even more importantly, we need level 16. We don't get level 16, we are not able to do anything this game. I have some pretty OP synergy with the Rakan and the Yasuo. It's really easy for him to land his combo because he can't really mess that one up. A free kill for my team. Are they escaping? Looks like they got out. An enemy has been slain. That's a spam ping because they're blind. Look at this, Jinx. But I think Jax just up for the ripoff. Right, we have enough gold for it. They're gonna take the Baron now, I'm pretty sure. 
you just have to give it up. Nothing to do there. Insus. Another control ward. Still has not used the Herald. You could just drop it and then go towards the Baron. Alright, a lot more attack speed. Feels a lot more smooth to play this champ now. But we can't do anything about the Baron, sadly, because we have no frontline yet, and Jungle is trolling. So if they're doing it right now, it's gone. Yasuo has MR, okay. Permanence is going to be uh, even better. We'll just go bot because we had teleport. The worst part is that he's not gonna get bent. Unless he typed a lot in the chat. That's right, it's pretty incompetent. Refusing to ban these people. So you can keep doing this as much as you want basically, and nothing will happen as long as you don't type. Jesus, even my ults? Was not enough, because we have nothing on our side. It's like four giga awful players. Sometimes you have to, you're gonna lose, nothing to do. But if you think it's going to be a comp gap, then you just gotta dodge. But in this case, this guy is also running it, I don't know why. It's not making any sense to me. But let's try to see what we can do when we get 16. They have a lot of annoying CC, mainly the Rakan. Because it's point and click, he just runs into somebody, you get charmed and then knocked up afterwards. That's pretty hard to play around when you don't have a frontline who can, you know, tank or peel or anything. If I step up right here, the Jax can just dive me. Look at how fast the towers are going down because he has wall breaker. We are out. The win wall and the E. Imagine trying to auto tag against these two. Right. Do we just go mid? I think we go mid. They're gonna take the uh, Baron. They should be taking the Baron. We are getting closer to 16. Maybe we can do something there. Who knows? Double MR items. Okay. Even better that we are going AD kill. But even if you're going AD kill, you still deal this amount of magic damage. All we can do is defend and wait and see if they're making any mistakes. This Jax is huge. We just have to stay here and defend, nothing else to do, and probably will not be able to hold the Jax with Hold Break and Baron buff. But let's see, maybe we can stop him while they're doing the Drake. He should get banned, like if it's working as it should, he should definitely get banned. But he won't. And that's the issue that has been leak for years is that Riot has no clue they're doing with the game they're not punishing people who are griefing and this is what's frustrating a lot of players and it's basically what happens when you get people working on a game who had no clue how the game works but these type of games you just have to play through it and then focus on the next one because yes, you will get them often, but most of your game should be pretty standard. You know, you have losing teammates, they have losing players, all that stuff.
He's saving his E because he wants to jump me. Now he can just dive me. He's 16 as well. Just have to give that one up. No one can defend it anyways. Like I'm I cannot hold this one alone. He just takes out He's gonna get out, is he not? Okay, nice, he died. Yeah, that's the int from this ape top side and also this guy. So, you know, when a Jax gets fed and he gets these items, there's nothing you can do as kill. Absolutely nothing. Look at this guy. What is he doing up there? What is this lack of intelligence for you to think you can be up there? Against a fed Yasuo with Baron buff and minions? Just don't play AD carry. You cannot play a carry role if you cannot position. Almost 16, but feel like this game might end before. Yeah, this gonna end for sure. Well, unlucky, we did not get to 16 this game, but it's also a pretty, you know, game where people did not try and just gave up. But that's how it goes. Let's try the next one. Welcome back to the second game on kill. I'm not sure who we are playing against. It could be a Renekton. Could also be the Akali. I actually have no idea. But uh, one thing you can do against these difficult matchups is that you can take fleet footwork and then when you E somebody, you're gonna get the full healing. To uh, that's one thing, but you know, if you want to scale better, of course, Ether Tempo is the way to go. I, will until spawn. I think it is a Kali mid. Doesn't matter either way. Um, so this game, I'll be going AP kill, I think. No mind. If, if this guy goes AP, then I'm gonna go AD kill. So I had to wait and see what he's building. I think he might go AD. Maybe it's just a starting item. I do not fear the holy fire. We'll see. That's the good thing, like I talked about last game, is that Kale is pretty versatile when it comes to builds. Maybe we should have covered. It's a Kali mid. Just run away, guys. Are they fighting? Okay. Maybe I should have helped then. My bad. Oh. Yeah, we could maybe have got a kill if I went in, but it's really risky. And if I die, then it just messes up everything. There is no from the light. But Akali lost some CS and XP, so that's good. In this matchup against Akali, you're playing around her Qs, right? You want to hit them out, try to walk in and out, trying to make use of it. Once it's out, then you can trade. And you can go for extended trades against Akali as well. Because she is not going to win extended ones, but she wants to be poking you a lot. And then she wants to go all in. Later on. I'm gonna poke under the tower. And playing against Evelyn, so she typically does not gank very often before level 6. But if somebody's so extended, then she can still go for it because the charm... It's a pretty good ganking tool. Best if you just let her push in the wave, so it's gonna, you know, push towards us. A clean cut divides darkness and light. When she has the shroud, then you also do not want to trade when that's up. You have to wait for it to um, go on cooldown. But he got first blood, so that's good. Since we are going to scale up. He does not, you know, 
have enough energy to be able to sp spam the Q early on. Now it's used to shroud, so I have to get out. Otherwise, I'm gonna die straight up. I have to stay a bit further back now because we are within lethal range. Ross is kinda lucky that he went for Conqueror instead of Electrocute. Just have to stay out of range, bring up when possible, and you do not want to get tagged by the E. Right, let's uh, back off here. We're gonna get boots and then that one dagger. Let's get the boots and dagger. Movement speed, you know, against melee matchups, that's huge. Always helps. Helps you dodge stack you. Helps you kite. All that good stuff. So if she bases right here, that'll be good for us because we're just gonna stop pushing. What we can do is that we try to cancel one recall. It's not recalling nice. Okay. It would be pretty bad for her if she recalled. Because I could freeze this wave and she would be losing a lot. I'm gonna try to match, match the push a little bit. So it does not insta crash into the tower if we can. Because the next wave is coming now, so we're just gonna drag it up here. Also getting a ward down. Just gonna keep it here. I'm not gonna run through the wave to cancel recall. And when you get level 6, it's easier to farm, but it's also more risky because you can all in at any point. I drag the wave a bit once again. Like this, so we just stop her from being able to recall. And it allows us to save hit from a safe distance. So 6, we are as well, so now we can start auto attack trading. It's not gonna take that one. We do the same thing once again, like this, so it doesn't crash on the tower, and then we keep the wave in a good spot once again. And if it crashes, it's fine. Just making sure that we're getting everything, and she's also losing a lot of CS here. Because this entire wave is gone. I'll not be getting anything here. The just rise above this mortal soil. I was gonna start pushing towards her, so we could, you know, stack up a wave and then make it crash. But I have to start pushing now, she's topside. That was Akalia, so... A push now, that'd be good. Even if she's getting a kill top, it is what it is. If she doesn't get anything, it's insane. Just keep running. Okay, she's dying, that's fine. We're just pushing. If you get one play, that'd be nice, but if Evelyn comes, since you just took the white crops, then you're not here. He gave up a lot. Look at her CS. 34 CS. And it's also XP she lost, not only CS. And I'm getting one plate as well. Right, now we just gotta back off. It would be nice if we could take out this wave as well, but that would be way too greedy, so we'll back off instead. And I think we'll just go for AP kill. As I have a feeling Twitch might be going for AD build. Yeah, looks like he is, so that's good. We don't want to be having too much AP. Because when they stack MR, they're gonna get way too much value out of it. Tag is doing fine, Bodlin is doing great. I think she just checked the Drake. Now she's level 6, it's really important that you're not O extended over here because she's gonna all in you when she can. She wants to all in you. 
And if you get attacked by the sea right here guys, the second part of it deals a ton of damage. It's almost like an ultimate worth of damage. Be able to run under the tower, do so, so you don't tank. That second part of the E. Okay, she's gonna go board that thing, so I'm just gonna push. Back nice. Be having a pretty substantial CS lead. Pretty much just poke her whenever she walks up to Q. As long as she does not get anything early on, I outskill it so hard. So that's all you had to wait for. Let's see if we can beat her. Oh, it's warded, clearly. Be careful, even if you're up here, she can still all in you if she has the shroud. So be careful when you're poking. But just stay like a bit further back and don't walk up too far. Nice, that's fine. That's good. She lost the ultimate. Now she can't do anything. I used it early on, the salts. So I could block out, you know, the Qs. But ideally, you want to save it for the second part of ultimate, but it's pretty hard to uh, see when it's coming. No ultimate on the Akali. Help him. Nice. Good stuff. We are having TP up as well, and when Akali has her ultimate on cooldown, he can't do anything, so the lane is pretty much free until it is back up again. Gonna keep up the pressure. Before you stack Q, try to see if you can get uh, E, I mean, try to see if you can get one auto tag in, because it's like an auto tag reset. When I hit that Q, you saw I got one auto tag in, and then I used the E. That's Ignite, so we gotta back off here. Nice, got Ignite out as well. I had a feeling she had ult up, but that's worth it. Another huge ultimate going on cooldown. I think we'll just stay for this wave and then we'll back off. Right. An ultimate on the Evelyn. Akali's ultimate is gonna be back up, but she does not have Ignite. We'll just TP back as usual. Bot lane's going ham, nice. My ultimate is also back up. Remember, Evelyn has her ultimate. Like, put a point into the ultimate level 6, so he has that invisibility. To be precise, it's a stealth. So, she has pretty unique ways of ganking now. Now we'll see her. That's why I like to have this control ward, because it's easier to spot her if she's coming. And if you ward, want to ward against her properly, you have to ward her jungle camps. That's the only way. That guy is roaming a lot. Look at his CS. How much he's losing. I don't mind. We just keep AFK pushing. We have this control ward, so if Evelyn is trying to flank, we can see her, and then we can try to run away and keep the distance until the charm runs out. Not 
Yeah. But a punish for that gank. Ultimate once again. Evelyn. And I'm level 11, and we're gonna have the Nash's Tooth. It is showtime. Let's see, this is why it's really important that you trade back. You don't just run away. Of course, if it's a gem, it's just gonna straight up one shot you and just run away if you have no chance of winning. But in this case, because I was constantly auto attacking as well while they were trying to gank me, got both of them to low HP, forced them to disengage, and then also got the Akali in the process. Why it's so important that you, if you have the chance to do so, trade back. Don't just let them get away with taking all of your HP. This way, they know they're gonna get punished, so... They will not try to do this again, unless it's really a safe kill. Then getting chased, and Akali just died, so we just push it out. Let's go in the AFK split pushing adventure. Just keep pushing it out. Okay, Evelyn just spawned. Akali's not here yet. When we don't have the ultimate up, it's pretty risky to push. So now we just gotta back off. Because Evelyn could be coming straight mid. Look at this here's difference because we freeze the wave. He roamed at pretty bad times, even though she got kills, she lost a lot from it. That's why if you know how to manipulate the waves, even if the opponent is roaming, you can still get a massive lead just by searing better. And focusing on the farm instead of just roaming around. Made it's up and running. Look at what. I'll go, but no worries. Get this one. I think I'll just TP. I'm gonna get this. For the cannon, worth it. Now you just prioritize. Farming as much as you possibly can, getting to that 16 fast. Which can survive? Looks like he is. Oh, never mind. Cillian's also coming. They're pushing a bit too far up. I have to back off here. I could also wait, like right here, because things might be coming this way. And she was. Patience. I'm gonna auto this one to keep the passive up in case Aelin is also coming. He's so lucky I did not have my E up. That's a lot of people and a lot of stuff they used. get the kill onto me, but you can see how much it's helping that you're actually, you know, fighting people instead of just perma running away. You should be dead, right? Unless she has... Oh, she did die to AoE, I guess. Yikes. Okay, nice. I'm gonna sell this so we can get another large shot, and then we'll go top. Warwick got a nice counter pick, so Renekton has not been able to do anything, and he's gonna fall off pretty fast as well. This is pretty good for bursting, and also because he has ignite. So be careful. You know, if you have the ultimate, you can just block out that initial burst, and then he has nothing left. But if he has a stack fury bar, you obviously want to be careful. This is because he used the stun, so the moment he tries to disengage, I just trade with him. Once again, the same thing I told you guys about, make sure that you're trading back. If you don't, 
he's gonna get a lot of your HP, then he backs off, waits for his cooldowns to come back up, and then he will be trying to dive you. I'll back off. It would be nice if we could get some uh, CS. Gold, so I could get the death cap on the recall. As if I'm this without losing too much HP. Night on the Renekton. And a lot of people mid. No one is here to defend top, so I'll just keep pushing. Auto tag and then E to uh, animation cancel. Also go into the jungle, see if there's something to take. There isn't, so I'll just back off because Akali might be coming this way. And I'm sitting on a lot of gold. Get this, and then you can also get the Shadow Flame. I think I'm gonna try the Lich Bane. And just TP bot. Pushing all the way up, otherwise, I just run towards it. And then we can have Warwick or Twitch defending topside. I'm just using the W to uh, get back to lane faster. The next one is gonna go down. If he does this, in an attempt to try to push the tower, just walk within melee range so his ultimate is going to damage you and then he's gonna take tower aggro. But I think he knew he was dead because he saw the Braum and Zack. Almost 16, and Akali is still 12. This is what happens when you don't focus on farming a lot. Evelyn could be here, so I'm just gonna back off for a bit until my teammates have taken the Drake. Right, let's help with the uh Ooh, okay, is Ellen also here? Oh man, I should not have walked in. Trying to help. Wait, Twitch? Not auto attacking? Okay, he's out. He is out. Oh, he got stunned. Unlucky. I should not have followed that call, you see. I always tell you guys about to not follow calls you think they're pretty bad and then I did it myself, so... Don't make these mistakes. Because I got myself caught, like, I went this way around and then they got to flank me from all sides. And then I died like an ape. And also gave away a pretty huge shutdown, I think. Yeah, that was a lot of gold. But I want to get 16 fast anyways, and Twitch should be going mid. Get the Evelyn. I don't have ult up yet, so if Akali gets to ult me, I'm dead. We just can't run away now. Evelyn could also be coming. Almost 16. So just gotta be patient. And also because, you know, with this build you're really squishy. You don't have any HP. So I think what I'll be doing after the Lich Bane, I'm gonna go for Rylice. I get a bit of tankiness. And also having that slow is also really nice. Almost 16. So just gotta be patient. Arm is also pretty good. That's a nice one, giving that vision. Got the ward. Next wave. We are good to go. I'm holding this spot right here so I can see if Akali is pushing up. So she will not have Evelyn, but she still demolishes people with that combo. 
All right, it's showtime. If Akali is top side, she is, so I'm just gonna push. Switch wants to reset. It's also the correct way. They're coming towards me, but I want to push this out. Okay, let's get out of here. Just using random cues in case Evelyn's coming from this side and if we hit her. This mid set's okay. Now that we are 16, we can just group up. I can protect the Twitch or myself. Depending on, you know, who's able to deal the most amount of damage in fights. I'm just gonna move towards them now that I'm 16. Also have the blue so I can just spam. Hitting up the Twitch. And no one can engage onto him because he has my ult. Ready to go. They are really spam pinging a lot. Sometimes that is what's needed. I had to go and zone the uh, Evelyn. Oh, we see her now. She's mid. Fine. That's free. I don't know why they're committing so hard for the uh, Warwick. That's worth it for us. Gonna have enough for the Lich Bane once I reset. Let's take... Was this one up? But the brown, it's whatever. This one, and then probably Right Eyes. And then you can also get a Sonya's or a White Staff if they're building a lot of uh, magic resistance, which they are not in this game. Get to bot lane a bit fast. Oh, he is so dead. That might mean we're not getting the Drake, but see if I can take the Renekton out. Just have to wait a little bit. He started pushing because he thought nobody was here. So he wants to go for that plate. And the AP kill, you know, the healing you're getting with the W is why AP kill is so much better during team fights than AD. But AD is really insane for split pushing and single target DPS. We also have some constant healing going on. Just looking harder and harder for that team to do anything because we are already in the late game, me and the Switch, with our items. Absolutely shredded to pieces. So where's the Evelyn? Oh, luckily we got to kill her before she ulted out. I have to dodge the Jinx ult if it's coming. Gonna recall over here, should be fine. She was waiting for me. Let's push this out and then we'll go for the end. Nice, and that should be GG's. So that is the episode we'll kill. Next episode is going to be a different champ, so we constantly use new champs. But one entire episode is going to be the same champ. GG's, and see you all in the next video.